Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I just wanted to pop on quick. It's the beginning of January 2022. So being that it's the beginning of a brand new year, I just wanted to kind of reintroduce myself to any of you that don't know who I am and also go over the basics of what I'll be doing here in my climate um, for the month of January to get ready for the gardening season. So for those of you who are new to the channel or maybe come in, you know, at some point and never really known where I garden. Um, I garden in Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, I'm in kind of the south central part of the province and technically it's classified as growing zone 3B. Uh, 3B, as I understand it, can get down to as cold as minus 35 Celsius in the winter. And I'm not sure we've technically hit that in the last few years. Um, I think we're getting to be more of a, a zone four, but we, we've been getting really close to it. And with wind chills and that, um, definitely been getting into the minus 40s for that kind of cold feeling. But um, I'd say we're, we're usually down in the kind of minus 29, minus 30 range is usually kind of around the coldest that we're getting here now in the winters. On the flip side of that, we can get up to around 30 degrees, sometimes just a little bit more um, than 30 degrees Celsius in the summer. And I have about an average of 110 frost-free growing days in my area. So that doesn't give me a ton of time to get my seeds um, growing outside and uh, to their uh, maturity before frost starts to set in here. But I'm lucky enough that we have a lot of sunshine days and nice long days through that growing time. So it really does help my plants to mature quite quickly. So a lot of my seed sowing, because of my environment that I'm growing in, uh, starts inside. I do have a small cold frame that I can use for some things, um, but mostly it's used for hardening off and I do grow a few things in there in the summer sometimes just to kind of play around with it. But for the most part, my seeds for, I'd say probably 80% of my crops are started inside. And so they, I start them right in this room here. I grow a lot of seeds. I grow flowers and I grow vegetables. I grow ornamental grasses. I grow, you know, if I can grow it here, I try to grow it, it seems like. And I like to start a lot of that from seed. So I, I need a lot of space and I have a pretty good setup with grow lights and shelving. And I'm really fortunate to be able to have a space to dedicate to that in my house. So that's pretty much where I garden. I have a, a pretty good size um, growing space outside. Um, and... I grow in mostly raised beds and a few raised planters and large pots as far as my food crops go. Um, and then a lot of my um, or more ornamental things are grown in either decorative pots or right in the ground. Um, yeah, so that's who I am. I, I grew up on a farm. I, I've always been around growing things and I just love watching, you know, a tiny seed grow into something that uh, is beautiful, uh, that you can admire, or something that can feed myself and my family. So that's just a little bit about who I am, um, and uh, I just thought it might be helpful for some of you that uh, maybe are a little bit newer to the channel and would like to know that. Now on to what I'm doing to get ready for seed starting and the growing season in January. We just came out of an extreme cold warning that lasted for about two weeks. And uh, it doesn't feel much like the growing season outside, but sometimes that's what we really need is then to just have, be thinking about the warm thoughts and the, and the growing. So I'm planting my garden now. Every year about this time of year or even sooner, I start to make a plant. So this is my garden plan. I have my raised beds marked out on it and um, the pots that I grow in and I've just been playing around with the uh, the spacing of things and where I want to plant things and also what I want to grow. I grow mostly the same um, vegetable crops and fruit crops from year to year but sometimes I want to try something new or sometimes I've decided that uh, you know I'm just I'm done with with growing some things so I kind of try to nail down that list and how I'm going to fit it all into my space 
And then I make sure that I have the seeds that I want for that. So in this big container here is all of my food crop seeds other than like my potatoes um, and any seed garlic that I would have saved, which of course I've already have that planted last fall now. But seed potatoes I don't store in here. They're stored in a cool place. Uh, but anything that's grown just directly from seed is in this bucket or I need to order more. So I can just go and I can just pick up a container and this container here has beans in it and so I can check how many seeds of the different varieties of beans that I have and if I need to order more make a note of it and then go find uh, what I need. I usually order most of my things online from a couple of um, Canadian, re re Canadian retailers and so I'll just go in and, and make an order. I have already made an order um, in the fall for some things and now it's just kind of time to double check that I have what I need. So I'll go through all of that and uh, just make sure I am ready for when it's time to get seeds in the soil. And then I also start to think about what kind of ornamental plants I'm going to want to be growing. Um, and a lot of that is going through and watching other YouTube videos, looking through gardening magazines and, and uh, flower books and publications and things and just seeing what's out there, what's new, um, you know, feeling inspired and wanting to try things. And then I always have a few tried and true that I grow as well. Um, but it's fun to, to try new things and start new things. So then I, I go through and I look because again, I have a big bucket. This is another container. And uh, this one's actually labeled, um, it's organized into packages of when I would sow these plants. Uh, so like, I have this one here is March. And they're actually divided up into, most of them are divided into the first two weeks of the month and the last two weeks of the month. May is set up a little bit differently, but and so then I would just go through and see what what seeds are in here and if I have them and if not I would order more and again with the seed growing sometimes it's just you know going through those uh, seed catalogs and picking out things that are fun um, one thing that I need to be aware of when I'm ordering when I'm ordering seeds uh, is I do need to be aware of my length of my growing season so I, you know, I can't be easily growing things that are, you know, need like 150, 200 days of growing time. Some things I can start indoors and give that extra couple months that they might need. Other things don't do well indoors. And so that's not an option. And that goes for both the flowers and the food crops. So it's something to be aware of in a cold climate. You need to know, you know, is this something feasible to grow in my area? Um, Seeds are relatively cheap, so if you have the space and you want to start some things and just experiment and see, you know, it might be worth it to you to try that. Um, sometimes I like to try things and, and see, you know, if I can push the boundaries with them. But uh, a lot of times you try, I try and stick to that, you know, 110 days to maturity, you know, or less with the crops um, unless it's something that you know you normally would start like my tomatoes my hot peppers that they're all getting started really early you know things like pa um, petunias calabricoa um, ornamental grasses some of those need to be started extremely early indoors uh, the same with my heat loving summer bulbs um, i have them stored away indoors right now and then i'll pull them out a few months before my average last frost and get those started inside and that's just part of gardening in a cold climate. Another thing that um, I like to do this time of year is I would like to go through um, if there's been any pests or diseases or anything that's cropped up in the previous year that just kind of stumped me or you know I it was new to me or for whatever reason I just feel like I need to know more about it. This is the time of year where I take advantage of the cold days to sit inside and do research and learn about those things. And in fact, I have one thing that popped up 
this fall when I was lifting my dahlias and I had no idea what it was. And um, I'm gonna make a separate vi video on that and I'll bring you guys along. I'm gonna go actually go through my, my tubers here pretty soon and go through and, and uh, tr try and see just how bad that is because I, I think I, I made a mistake with that not knowing what it was. Um, so research your, your diseases and pest issues so you can be ready to get a handle on them um, if they crop up again in the following season. And I also just like to make sure that my space is ready and I have the supplies I need, especially these last few years. Um, it's just been it's been really difficult to get some of the, the supplies. And I think the suppliers are starting to catch up in some ways, but we still um, can have trouble getting some of our seed trays and even seeds and things that we want. So I go through and check my stock of trays. I like to make sure that I have watertight trays. So I actually fill them with water in the tub and make sure that I have plenty of trays that will hold water for me when I'm starting indoors and uh, that I have all the trays. And I try to make sure that I have um, some peat moss seed starting mix or a soilless mix of some sort that doesn't have fertilizer in it, vermiculite, perlite, any of those things that I'm going to want for starting seeds and make sure that I have that all on hand as well, as well as um, a very weak uh, fertilizer of some sort. It could be a seed starting fertilizer or just, you know, a nice uh, mild fertilizer that's just a kind of a, an all around fertilizer that I can dilute for my my seeds when they're ready when my, for my seedlings when they're ready for that and I just you know I just make sure I'm ready so that uh, I can hit the ground running when it's time to get started so hopefully that um, helps you a little bit helps you maybe get to know me a bit helps you to know um, if you're in a cold climate like myself uh, what kind of things you can be doing this time of year to um, prepare for starting your seeds and uh, I'll be back uh, giving you some, some updates as I start sowing some seeds and uh, talking about some of the things that I'm going to be growing this year. So watch for those in, in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.